Now, here is a review. Okay, now if you if you kind of look at the ML, right, uh, machine learning. So, so you can sort of read broadly group, group it as uh, what is called supervised learning and then what is called unsupervised learning, right. I mean, uh, so the supervised learning, okay, if you see, right, that is exactly the case which, which I told you just now. Let us say super resolution is one example, right. So, what do you do? So, you sort of, uh, so in this case, it is actually a classification problem. What I told is actually, you know, a regression problem. Both cases, right, you can have supervised uh, situations. So, if you see here, right, so what you are showing is you are showing a mug, right, I mean, as input to the, to your, to your, to whatever, right, you have a module to which you are showing it and then uh, the output, right, you have, you have various labels, you have got probably coffee, you got tiger, I mean, whatever, right, you have got, got a bunch of labels and, it, and then right, it is supposed to tell what this is. So, it will, it will say that it is a coffee mug with a certain probability and then maybe, right, it might say that you show a tiger, you expect it to show tiger, but initially when you train, right, you actually show many, many images like this and then you say that, right, that is a mug, that is how you train it. Because you show the image, you say that right, right here is a mug. You show a tiger image, you sh say that right, that should be, that should get flagged as actually a tiger. Show something else, a car, you say that right, that should get flagged as a car, and that's how you train it, right? So this is completely, completely supervised, right? In the sense that somebody has to tell. So somebody has sat down and kind of right done all this labeling or what is called done is annotation, right? Somebody has annotated this data set. So you may have a million images there, but for every image there, somebody has said that this is an ant, right, this is something, this is something, this is a ship, everybody, somebody has done that, right. And depending upon the, upon the number of classes that you have to finalize, right, you may have a thousand classes like in ImageNet or whatever, right, you have a data set where you have a certain bunch of classes and you then keep showing examples and examples and examples and then, and then, you know, then there is a training procedure which you will see and after you train the network, now you hope that even an image that was not in the data set, if you show it to it, let us say a tiger but not exactly in this pose. Some other image which was never shown to the network, it should be able to classify that as a tiger, right? That's the hope. So that's like entirely supervised. Now, uh, right? These are still a, you know, a little. These slides are a little bit old, right? Now, within super, I mean, so so close to supervised are actually multiple things, right? What is uh, right, something is called uh, something that is called weakly supervised, okay? Something that's called weakly supervised, and then there's something called semi-supervised, okay? Now. This is supervised means this is completely supervised. I mean, you know, so by by kind of weakly supervised, right? What we what we really mean is that, uh, for example, right? To to just uh, right give you an example, you it's like it's like a surrogate task, right? What it means is that, for example, right? If I want to solve one particular problem, but then right, I don't have the say, annotations for that, but I have annotations for some other some other some other task, right? And I want to use that weak, so I want to use that supervision in order to solve a different task. You get that? That is like weakly supervised, I mean, because I do not have a direct supervision of, for this task, right, that I want to solve, but I have a supervision of something else in the sense that somebody has already done the work for another task, right, some fellows have already done that work. But can I sort of use that information in order to, in order to solve my task, right, that is called weak supervision because it is weak, right, I mean, you do not have, so this supervision is like a strong supervision, I, mean, I know exactly, supervised means that I know that for this image, right, that is the label, for that image, that is the label, I know that exactly, right. Whereas in weak supervision, there is a surrogate task uh, which helps you solve the main task. Right? That is like that is like weak supervision. In fact, we one of my students, I know last year right, he had done a, done some work on generating stereo from actually monaural audio, but then using image information. And you do not have stereo data for every audio, okay. It is not possible because nobody records like for every audio stereo and all, right. So what you have to do is you have to take some other task. For example, what we did was we took you know localization of of objects to be the task for which data annotation was already available. So, for example, it is like saying that, you know, I have got in this room two instruments, right, there is violin on this side and there is some other instrument there, right. Now, if I have, if I have an algorithm that can tell where objects are, it does not know anything about audio, okay, that, that is not at all an audio related task, it just tells that in this, in this image, there is a violin there and there is some other object here, right. Now, that, so the idea is that, right, if, if I give you a single channel audio and if there is a network that can produce a stereo, but for the stereo, I do not have a match. I do not have data to match the stereo, stereo information. It could be wrong what it is producing. But how do I check whether it is correct or not? What I do is I give the stereo to another network, right, which should be able to just use the, use, use this information, right, in order to be able to tell. It is like saying if I got to close my eyes, right, and you, and you simply, and you simply, you know, play some audio to me. Can I tell where the instruments are, right, something like that. Okay, so that's like a weak supervision, right? Because 
because the localization I tell you right oh here is an instrument here is an instrument but then the audio I'm not I don't have that stereo data so then what it means is the first network should really produce fantastic stereo in order to be in order for the subsequent network to be able to localize these guys well using the audio information right something like that okay now these are like weakly supervised semi supervised means there is labeling available for a small amount of for a fraction of the data like for example you may have a million images but maybe for say thousand images I have labeling information that means I have you know annotated information I do not have for the rest now can I kind of leverage that right can I leverage that in order to solve uh, in order to you know generate labels for for my say, you know, other images and so on that is called uh, semi supervised right and then ok uh, yeah so I am so what I am saying is right so when I say supervised there could also be spin offs of that you know spin offs of that which you will probably hear when you read papers and all you would uh, end up hearing some like weekly supervised very likely you will hear that if you read some papers and all semi supervised and unsupervised is more like you know learning uh, sort of a data representation like a PCA right I mean you have all, all read PCA right at some point of time a PCA what does it do I mean right so you have you have a bunch of let us say you have a set of examples for a certain class right what do you do you construct a covariance matrix right out of that and then after you construct the covariance matrix, covariance matrix you get your get the most significant eigenvectors right those are your principal components now that is a representation right so that is like that is like a representation for that for that uh, for that object class right that is the best representation for that object class best in whatever sense right in a sort of a mean square error sense right now uh, PCA is basically a linear algorithm right PCA is totally linear it is uh, right, it's basically you know matrix right whereas here when you talk about uh, talk about deep learning right you you mean uh, when you say unsupervised learning right what you really mean is a network right so a simplest way of thinking about unsupervised learning is right so it is like it is like how well should I actually represent my data that is what I want right PC is one way but then that is all linear which basically means that it must have certain issues with it because I am already constraining it to be uh, you know it to be linear it to be completely a linear operation. Now, if you think about let us say uh, let us say right I mean you know, if, if I if I had face images with me and then if I wanted you know a face representation the simplest thing to do would be to actually push it through a network we call it unsupervised because if I actually push the image inside and suppose suppose I do suppose uh, see the, the, the simplest way is I just push it inside then I sort of I sort of reduce its its size right what is called that bring it to a bottleneck layer basically means that you know I could start with a 1024 by 1024 image but then eventually right I can kind of go through an encoder which will eventually bring it to a let us say 256 cross 256 or even less than that 64 cross, cross 64 kind of a kind of a representation and then I kind of read, read decode it back and then I say from the 64 cross 64 I should actually write you know I should be able to see my image back again now nothing I need to know nothing here because the input image should come out exactly at the output image uh, at the at the output it may not be exact you may have some loss right along the way but now this middle right the bottleneck right where you know it is like this right it is like you know it is come down all the way from a high dimension it is come down to low dimension, then it is again going back because I want to see the image back again right. So, this bottleneck as it is called there that that is the representation that you have that representation right if you show if you show different different faces of the same guy it will eventually learn a representation that is sort of invariant to certain things which it should which it should support which it is supposed to ignore. For example, right, if there is just you know a little bit of noise right behind the face, it should not catch all of that, right? That's not really a representation of the face. That's something that just happened to be right in the image. So it so should learn to ignore that. Or if there is a lighting change, right, you should understand that that is not something that you should capture. The features that you want to learn should be actually invariant to to kind of nuisance, right? I mean, it, it, uh, so in the sense that right, it should not be sensitive to things like that. It should learn things that are intrinsic, so intrinsic to that to that particular class or to that particular person right. So, such a thing is called unsupervised learning. So, here so it is like you know it is like you can actually do a clustering I mean right using this the, the, the nice thing about unsupervised is that right you using this basic information right you can do a clustering and stuff like that without even knowing labels and all I mean so, so, so that way right people like for example, k-means clustering right is one such one such example okay which I think we will do okay when we do a traditional methods right of segmentation k-means is one such way. So, it is like totally unsupervised nobody tells you what is what right. So, it has to kind of figure out what goes where right depending upon their similarity or closeness and so on it will group them okay and, uh, and unsupervised learning is about given only data x learn the inherent. So, that is what I meant right intrinsic structure right what is it that is really so, so, so if I say right who is this boy right I have to get his features and not get 
great case see right i mean you know, get uh, get sort of confused by his hair style or maybe one day he grows a beard another day he doesn't grow a beard so those are all those are all things that i should learn to ignore and really catch the intrinsics of this person right so that's so that's unsupervised and unsupervised you never need anything you don't need to tell what should come out all that you say is input goes in the same input should emerge now you do whatever you want in between okay and how well you do this depends upon how well that that uh, that uh, that uh, that, uh, that particular representation is because what you could then do is you could use that representation in order to do various things right and depending upon how well that works you will say whether whether you have successfully done this or not right if you have done a bad job then that representation will not really work well when you when you use it for doing a classification task or something it will be sensitive to things that you don't want it to be sensitive to right again nothing is automatic right i'm not saying that you know you can just take a take a black box you know throw something in something will come out well you know things will get learned uh, doesn't work that way okay even though many of these things still you know many people say that explainable ai rate right, is still sort of you know we are still in the in the in the initial stages right people want to have explainable stuff but still we are you know kind of very far away from all that the, the limited things that kind of right people do is you know they say that right attention is getting paid to those parts of interest and therefore right it's explainable and so on but still far from really the kind of explainability that we as humans uh, are capable of okay so if you look at uh, traditional approaches right these are things which which we will which will do in more uh, sort of detail let's shift uh, and then hog is uh, hog is another kind of feature i mean histogram of oriented gradients uh, so so right in the earlier traditional approaches right the way kind of things used to be done was you would kind of you would arrive at handcrafted features by handcrafted what we mean is you decide whether i want to use shift here on this or whether i want to use hog here whether i want to use surf here what is what is that feature whether i want to do uh, right i mean or whether i want to do a harris corner detector what kind of features i want i decide right so in that sense it's handcrafted and then and then i pick those features for example if it's an image right then i maybe it's a shift or a hog or something this which i fix and then a classifier is then learned independently of this i mean really right there's no great sort of a link between the classifier that's coming because you know what do you do typically see for example if i have to if i have to do do a classification of different kinds of cars let's say now what do i have to do i have to i have to i have to get some get some features of of each of these uh kinds of cars right i have let's say you know, you know whatever five types of cars i have to get features out of that and then once i have the features then i should be able to push them into a classifier it could be a support vector machine or whatever and then i should be able to tell that like, that you know these labels are so these these features right come together and they are for car 1 these features come together they are for car 2 you want to do that kind of a classification right but if you if you look at it the classifier was always sort of independently uh you know uh, it depend you know we kind of it's not like right you know it depends upon what what kind of features features you choose the classifier you could choose right any of the ones right which are available out there the features could have been any of the ones that you want to choose and then you would experiment and then find out right, which one of these works the best similarly for speech right speech uh, the 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 nice thing was that people still could identify features that are reasonably robust to things that you want them to be robust to for example shift right is it's known to be reasonably robust to pose for example right i mean if i change my face like this and if you're taking a camera, camera and suppose you're catching some feature here then that feature if it's a shift feature it will still reasonably remain invariant to my post changes to illumination changes to expression changes so so all those things were still embedded in that feature because that is what you want as an invariance correct now uh, so even for speech for example right it's not like it's not like right you take a you take an audio signal you kind of compute its fourier transform and then you start extracting things right uh, even for audio there were handcrafted features handcrafted features i don't work in audio but i know that right, there is something called you know mel substral uh, mel frequency substral coefficients that is this mfcc right those are known to be very good to kind of capture audio characteristics and then you would have a classifier right or for example right i mean or if, or if it is nlp is natural language processing right so those people would have their bunch of features but everything was like a stand alone the features were handcrafted the classifier was again something you would decide and then bring them together you marry them okay but then you know but then right so 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 in a sense everything was so like like why what i said it independently the classifier comes in as a sort of an independent module uh, so this kind of a compositional feature abstraction right was not there so by which we mean that i know you know a compositional is like what i mean you know suppose i suppose i want to see right i want c to be a composed with you know b or let's say d is a composed with b composed with c right i mean that kind of sort of a compositional idea was not there right you just had you know something and then you had something else and then you would take these features put them into the other module get the output whereas a deep learning right is typically a, has this compositional form 
okay i mean even though these are all non linearities or non linearities and all that but at a basic level that right, you can think of it as several sort of you know compositional levels okay that are in play for example you could have the initial layers extracting low level features right like 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 it's shown here then you have a mid level feature all these are part of the same network right it's like you you have to, you, have, you kind of extract a bunch of features given an image you extract a bunch of features then those features go to the go to the next layer so the initial set of features are some low level features then they are sent to the sent to the right next level which is let's say mid level and again right, these are just representative example right so your low level features could be low, could be looking like this then your mid level features right that would sort of you know aggregate all these features right that you've learned at a lower level in order to produce something at a sort of a slightly higher level what you can call as a mid level feature then furthermore right one more layer or a bunch of layers come in and then they do what is called a high level abstraction and therefore you get some high level features and uh, symbolically right here it's shown that at a high level right you are you are able to say, see some what do you say red circles arcs certain shapes right whereas at a low level right you don't you just get edge information in the mid level maybe something in between somewhere you see something but not everything is very clear and even at high, even at high level it doesn't mean that every time you can interpret all of that but these are all symbolic examples okay and then and then and then followed by a classifier which is also a part of the part of the whole thing it's end to end there's a network that's playing right end to end so you have features 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 and then a classifier right so the classifier and the feature extraction are all together right so for example so the, so what will happen is what you hope will happen and what actually happens is that the features the right kind of features will come out right in order to be able to work for that kind of a, for that kind of a classifier right whichever whatever whatever you have whatever is that particular say network right that you have in mind or whatever is that architecture that you have in mind so all of this is working sort of end to end right so therefore the right kind of features will will be extracted so as to be able to get a classification accuracy which is very good right so so in so the sense that uh, no there is uh, you don't have a discontinuity it it's smooth right it's like saying which features will work best in order to have a highest classification accuracy right so therefore you extract features accordingly right i mean i can't tell that right i mean okay for example take shift it may not like to take shift because it may feel that if i take shift then maybe right i'll end up doing doing right pretty badly so so it figures out what are those features and that is why that is where right we lose a lose a, you know a little bit of handle over the problem because we no longer can sort of uh, what do you say right we can't steer it right we can only say uh, what should be the architecture for example right uh, think about it right for example if you have suppose you had let's say uh, blur okay motion blur now if uh, if you knew that right it was all things going on the road let's say it's for vehicles right then you know that it's going to be horizontal smear right? vehicles don't don't jump like this right i mean if you take a camera and stand in the road right and suppose in our whatever right what is that road that we are born when you are whatever If you just stand there and then right, you take actually pictures and something is moving very fast, right? You will see a, see you will see a horizontal smear, right? You won't. It's not very unlikely that you will see a diagonal smear. Very unlikely that you will see a vertical smear. Typically, it will be a horizontal smear. Now, your filters, right? When you when you actually build your field filters for the for your network, you can then probably right have them more more width rather than height, right? Why 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 go for a square shape, right? so things like that you can think about right? because that seems to fit the problem right i mean so one can just say that oh i mean right what, what is the problem i can take a 5 cross 5 kernel and then let this guy figure out but that's uh, that's just unnecessary work for for this network maybe maybe what will happen is it will eventually learn a kernel that's that's more or less one dimensional has very very weak weights elsewhere right it might actually figure it out that way i mean it might just decide that the other things are actually useless but then all that Uh, means a lot of parameters to be learned at the end of the day and then you may be wasting you know your resources so the idea is that if you can throw in your your ideas right into it and then you know you know how this problem is actually right what this problem is like and you can bring in some of the observations that you already have with you so bring it into the uh, right into the setup that helps right so that way that way you have a lot to contribute but at the same time there are many things right which uh, which you will find that you know are not things right you wish you had your more insights into